you know, Raised by Wolves is just getting fucking weird. It's, it's getting a little weird. You know, um, I'm still enjoying it, and I'm still curious of where they go with it. But now they're kind of, now they're kind of pushing it. You know, they're pushing a little bit of mind fuckery without dropping a few answers along the way. We did get a couple answers we'll talk about. They need to kind of pick up the pace on dropping a few answers. And of course, I don't mean like an info dump or whatever, but you know, now we're getting into like almost dark fantasy horror territory. So anyway, let's jump right in and talk about it. Episode six and seven of Raised by Wolves. As I said last week, it's getting kind of weird. Now it's getting just a little bit weirder. <laughs> And before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone, if you don't know or if you're new here, I'm working on the third version of my manuscript of the debut novel I'm going to release, I think, early next year called the Crimson God series. There'll be a link in the description below where you can sign up to get updates on that. It's just an email list for Indiegogo. I will be opening a campaign at some point. And you can also sign up on Patreon, the same things we posted there as well. And for anyone who chooses to join Patreon, you will also get free eBooks and paperbacks and hardbacks and all that good stuff that will be coming when we get to that point or whatever. So again, those links will be in the description below. So anyway, let's jump right in. Uh, Raised by Wolves, episode six and seven. They keep dropping two at one time. I don't understand this. Just drop one episode and make it easier for everybody. But they're dropping two at a time. I thought they were supposed to just do one after the initial three episode premiere or whatever. Anyway, we have Lost Paradise and Faces are the two episodes we got this week. And now it's just kind of stringing you along a little bit, like keeping you there and not really giving you any kind of answers. Um, I mean, there's certainly some clues there. So we, we have some theories. But anyway, we jump in and you go, Mother, you know, she's basically experiencing love. So now she's experiencing emotions. And now she can sort of maybe empathize at some point. I'm not saying right now, but I think she will with religionists who believe in stuff that may not be real because she wants to be with her creator. She basically came out and said that. It was even a weird sex scene with her creator in the hollow deck or whatever, where they were floating around and shit, and then they got rained on by milk. So she had kind of a religious experience herself. And then, of course, we have on the other end of that spectrum, we have Ragnar, who is becoming more religious because he's starting to hear voices again from Saul. And uh, that's getting really strange. And so um, I keep going back to the the Matrix thing. Like they're all kind of jacked into the Matrix or something because it, it things are not making sense in the sense of people see Tally. Like, for example, Campion said one time that why am I the only one that can see you and the other children can't? But that's not true. Mother saw Tally as well as Campion seeing Tally. But Mouse Boy or Paul also saw a little Tally running around with her damn dolls. And I'm, I'm kind of getting sick of it. It became like a grudge thing this time. And that's what I was saying earlier on about the horror. There was a little element of like, what the hell? It's getting more into like sci-fi suspense and thriller, you know, dark fantasy kind of weird shit going on. And um, I don't think it's going to be like a god. I don't think soul is going to be a real thing. I think there's going to be something in the middle uh, where they meet in the middle or something is where I think they're going with it. But it makes me think that they're still in some kind of like everybody, including the droids, are in some kind of matrix uh, simulation because she can't experience visions, but yet she has. Now, of course, she's going into the holodeck because she's obsessed with her creator. She's in love, and that's kind of what's driving her now. So that's now her primary focus is to be with her creator, the original champion, and not protect the children. We had the religionists kind of come in and leave a can behind and found the can and realized it was them. Ended up getting father basically killed, and then mother almost died as well because they took her eyes. And so they took over the camp basically and basically kidnapped the children back from the robots who kidnapped them from the ship in the first place. But we keep going back to the Ragnar thing and the voice, and he keeps hearing what he thinks is Saul now. And his wife's not really digging this. There's been a big rift between those two the last few episodes. She wants to take off to the tropical zone, if there even is one, uh, with her kid and take care of him and get rid of these religionist people and leave them. He's now being worshipped or whatever as a prophet, And he's kind of falling into going a little bit fucking psycho is what's happening. He's going fucking crazy. Campion, as in the the boy, the young Campion, not the OG Campion, is still getting on my damn nerves. He's kind of a pretentious asshole now, and uh, he's getting on my nerves. So I'm fine if they just get rid of him somehow or whatever as far as the character. I'm just saying the character on the show, he he just gets on my nerves. I know he has a role to play. But anyway, so he's back to, you know, basically being on the side of mother and father when before he was kind of the guy who was supposed to be special. He didn't get sick from eating the things because they the radioactivity didn't affect him somehow. They led you to believe he was part of this prophecy, and then they led us to believe Paul may have been the actual prophetic kid. 
Ends up being a pretty cool answer we did get is that in the end of episode seven, Ragnar uh, basically tells us that he's the one that the prophecy references as far as the orphan kid because he was orphaned as a child as well. And he's the boy who would lead people to the new land or whatever. So interesting twist how he's kind of catching religion, uh, but something's in his head, and I don't think it's a god. I think there's somebody controlling things. I think there's maybe has to do with the host guy we saw the last couple episodes where he's been on that planet for a while, but he didn't seem like a human either. He had superhuman abilities. Perhaps he's a droid, or perhaps he is the OG champion in droid form or something, his consciousness, and they came to the planet first. I thought it was pretty cool how they tried to capture her when they realized she was going to the holodeck to plug in, and they were like, why would an android need to be plugging in a holodeck for, for so long? She was just there and, and right there, and they could have just killed her, but they, they tried to use this beam, and somehow she was able to overcome it. And instead of just like stabbing her in the fucking eyes, I was screaming at the TV like when she was laying there, not that I necessarily wanted it to happen, but just kind of as, as advice. I was kind of giving advice to Ragnar and the crew there. Just stab her in the eyes with two fucking sticks or your knives, and it's over. That's where she gets her power. But she was able to overcome it, use the force, throw boulders at them, make the boulders explode. I thought that was pretty cool. It kind of shows you a little bit more of the extent of her powers and why she's so dangerous or whatever. So I thought that was a pretty cool action scene as well. And uh, you got to see a little bit more of the necromancer side. So anyway, Ragnar is basically kind of separating himself from his son now and his wife because he's going crazy with these things. It relates back to the guy who's in the helmet as well. That's what happened to him. He heard the voices of what he thought was Saul. And then all of a sudden when he did what he was told to do, which was actually, you know, impregnate these girls on the trip to uh, Kepler 22b. Then all of a sudden he lost the voices. The voices went away. The presence of God left him or whatever. So now there's a big rift going on. And even Mother said it herself, as I said in a previous video, that there's a lot of similarities between Mother and Ragnar. They're both atheists in the sense of not believing in a God, but they're both changing and kind of finding God in a way, at least in her case, emotions and want and desire and things like that, which can lead to believing in things that are not real. And I think that's an interesting concept as well to explore. But they need to start dropping a few more answers. Uh, and I think they obviously will. We're on episode seven. I think there's only three more to go, so we have to get some. I just didn't want it to be a big info dump in episode 10. We also heard the story, uh, backstory about what happened between Ragnar or, or his other self uh, and that guy's father, how he had him executed or whatever. I think that'll come up again. That's now come up twice. And so once he finds out the truth about Ragnar, and who he actually is, then there's going to be something come back up with that. So he's making enemies real fucking quick. And then we get the campion scene where they try to baptize him. He basically says, you know, I'll go through with it just to get free or whatever. Then he sees that they use the gravestones, the headstones of the other kids who had died from radioactive poisoning. And he kind of loses it. They throw him back in the cell. But then we see this tally girl. This is like the grudge shit. The tally girl's climbing on the damn ceiling and then saying basically you know, whispering to him, kill yourself so you can join us. We all miss you. And it's like, what is going on in those fucking holes? I brought this up before. There's something going on in those holes. You don't just fall down the hole and hit the bottom. Something happens when you fall to the bottom of these holes. Like, it's another place. It, it changes you. There's something living down there for damn sure. But something happens. It's not just like, you know, a certain death, just like Tally. She wasn't really crawling around the ceiling but he's imagining she is or something changed her to where she's able to do these magical type things. So it's, it's, it's either one or the other. Either they're in some kind of matrix thing and they're not really seeing this stuff, but a handful of characters are all experiencing this type of thing, or she is real and can crawl on the fucking ceiling because she's been changed by whatever in the hell is at the bottom of these holes. Anyway, Father has been reprogrammed and he's got this little itchy trigger finger showing you he's still kind of partially in there somewhere. So he does save Mother at the end from being thrown down the hole. After Ragnar hears the voice again about, you know, save her, keep her alive, and he's going crazy. Ends up fighting himself. He thinks he sees a vision of his old former self who he used to be, and then they fight. He ends up cutting himself, and he thought he was holding that scalpel the whole time that he had seen in the previous vision, but when he got back there and his wife started to try to work on him, and he gave us the whole thing about I'm the kid in the prophecy, he dropped the scalpel, but it turned into his regular pocket knife. So he wasn't even holding what the hell he thought he was. So it's starting to make you question everything. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is it getting too weird for you? Are you curious to where they go? Has anybody stopped watching it just out of curiosity? But are you going to stick with it through the last three episodes? They did actually approve season two already. So they can't give us all the answers this season, but at least give us, you know, kind of a full-fledged story before you move on to making us wait a damn year to get answers for season two. 
Anyway, guys, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smoke Screen Producers. And of course, if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and share. And be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.